also so I said that the extended suspension that they applied for was not granted so I am supposed to be back to school immediately but when I got to school the principal said that she got no word of me coming to school so I had to sit down on anything and I tell you she was the ministry man the man from the ministry said and then she said that she had no confirmation of that so she had to sit down on nanny detent and I was on nanny detent for two three days. This Form 3 student of Karipachima West Secondary School is in an unusual dilemma. He wants to go to school, but he's not being allowed. His mother explains that he was in a physical altercation where he was jumped by six persons outside the school, resulting in him being stabbed two times. He's then said to have retaliated, injuring one boy, who is also a student of the school. When all was said and done, only her son was suspended. However, since the week of suspension ended back in September, her son has still not been allowed to return to class. First, the principal said he could come to school, but he needed to be watched. So I, the statement I made was, so how are they watching him underneath a tent? I'm not spending my money to send my son to school to sit down underneath a tent. He could stay home and do that. Call the principal on the phone. Why is I was speaking to the principal on the phone? The principal literally hung up the phone on me. She did not want to hear what I had was to say. And from since the 16th of September till now, my son has been home. It has no person in authority stating or give me a document that my son is supposed to be home. So to me as a parent, I would send my child to school because the last information I got was he was supposed to be in school. Now the principal said, get written documents that he could come to school. How again that if three times I went to the ministry and I cannot see the supervisor for secondary school. The young boy says he's in good academic standing and he's hurt and confused. I mean, I want to go back out to school, but you know, it's kind of hard at the end of the day because all kind of thing. What kind of grades do you get? Mm, you know, 70s, 80s. Occasionally, 90s, you know, when you're actually trying to, your hardest. Over at Karapachima East Secondary School, another mother is also engaged in a battle with the school administration over her son. She says he has been suspended three times, which now puts him on the path to expulsion. But she contends the suspensions were mostly unwarranted. They say that um, they suspend him for breaking class, right, and for talking in front of the class, right? They had, no, they had no teacher, so all of them were like pacing the hallway, who in the class, who out the class, and all these kind of things, right? They had no teacher at that time, right? She said she heard laughter and thing in the other class next to her. When she came out now, he was twerking because he liked to be playing, playing, playing. He's a child. The mother acknowledges that her son is a bit of a class clown but says the situation has now come to a point where the teachers are trying to frame him so as to get him expelled. A teacher, right, told the whole Form 1 class to go and report, right, and to say that he taxing students. So one young man up and say, well, sir, that is not true. He never taxed nobody. The teacher say, you is the family, Miss Gatsby Dolly. Please look into this situation with these teachers and principal bullying these children. That is a form of bullying. Or you're bullying the children and them to write report. You're bullying the boy taking away the child money just for just to react. Right? Plenty of these suspension are not suspendable. Children can be placed on other warnings and watch. Or you're sending children home. And all you send these children them home. What it have home for these children to be doing? And then all I want to say too much are young people in crime. TV6 News contacted the Minister of Education on both matters. The Minister is advising parents with students in such situations to first attempt to address the matter with the principal, failing which parents should then visit the respective education district office and speak with the school supervisor. Nevertheless, the Minister has committed to looking into the two matters highlighted in this story. Renessa Cutting. TV6 News.